Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like King Domino Origins. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back into prehistoric times, way before the original King Domino, back when fire was being invented. Today we're taking a look at King Domino Origins. This is a new standalone game. This is not an expansion to King Domino. This is a new version of the game that sits on its own, is a base game, and it has three different ways to play. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you what's different between this and King Domino. If you haven't played King Domino before or you're not familiar with it, there's a link below to watch that first because here I'm gonna show you what's different and I'm gonna show you and tell you why I'm never gonna play King Domino again, sadly. But not really, because this is way better. King Domino Origins plays very similarly to the original King Domino, but there's three different ways to play this. So I'm not going to go over how you actually play King Domino. If you're not sure of how to play it or you're not familiar with it, click the link below that has my review of King Domino to learn the basics of that. In this video, I'm only going to show you what's different. Speaking of differences, you see that the tiles now have different areas. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different areas, and they're different from the original ones, and the crowns have been replaced by fire, but they act the same way, is at the end you're gonna multiply the amount of tiles times the amount of fire for that area, and you'll get points that same way. However, the big difference in this first way to play this game, which is discovery mode, is it plays just like King Domino, but the, uh, the, the the undergrounds have been replaced by these volcanoes. So let's say we're placing a domino. Remember the middle is wild and we place it here. These volcanoes work differently. Now this has two of them, which means you'll take a token with two flames and you can place it up to two squares away from this. You can even go diagonal. So you could go one, two. Now this has now made this have two of the flames, which again would have been like crowns in the original King Domino, but it can't be placed on one that has a flame or flame token. So we put it just like this. Let's say we had another domino to place, and let's say we wanted to place it something like this. Well, this is a single domino uh, volcano. This allows you to place a single fire up to three away. So you could go like one, two, even further away that way. One, two, three. We couldn't put it here because of the flame, but we could put it here. And now this area here is one, two times three. It's already worth six points. Now the ones can go up to three, the twos can go up to two, and there is a third, there is a, a three volcano that you played three out, but it can only go one away. And remember, you can't place it on anything that has a flame or a token with a flame. That's pretty much how you play Discovery. So it's very similar to the very basic King Domino, but this adds just a little bit more thought and it's not too much harder to teach. The second way to play this is called Totem Mode. In this mode, you'll be using resources and these totem tokens. Now, m mammoths, fish, mushroom, and flint correspond with these tiles here, but let me show you more about these resources. Now, going back to our original example, if you notice, some of these tiles have resource icons on them, and when you place them out, when players are sort of drafting the dominoes, you place these on them so people know what they're getting. When you take the domino, you now have a resource. Now, right now, I have one fish and one flint, and if you have the most of any one of these resources, you take the totem marker, and if you hold this at the end of the game, it's gonna be worth a certain amount of points, three, four, five, or six. So right now, we're winning in fish and we're winning in flint, we take these two. If someone ends up passing me and having more, they can take it from me. It's sort of like the longest road in Settlers of Catan. However, let's say we had placed this two volcano, and as we place it, we want to place this. We could go one, two. This does not have any fire, so we could put it here, but if we do, we're going to be giving up this resource, which might make us give this to some other player that now is beating us, so there's a lot of more trade-offs and more things to think about. That's pretty much it. You'll add up your points as normal, plus you'll add up any of the totem majority tokens that you have, and each resource out there is also one point. Now the last mode is called tribe mode. You do not use the totem scoring majorities with the resources, but you do use the resources in this game. Because let's say that we had these resources and also in this version, you don't get points for these at the end of the game. Your main reason for getting these resources is to turn them in because you're not getting the bonuses at the end for having the most and you're not getting points for them at the end. But if you have two different ones, you can turn those in and spend them to get one of these cavemen tokens, and you use any two different ones. This one you place on a, any one of these. Let's say we grabbed this one. You can place it on any empty one that doesn't have one of these already and does not have a fire token or fire, and you can place it like that. Now, later on, if a fire token goes on here, this would be removed. So another thing to think about from a spatial place, this one just gets you one point at the end of the game. 
This one will get you four points for every mushroom resource that's anywhere surrounding the eight spots around it. This one gets you a point for every flame that's around it. This one gets you two points for any resource that's all the way around it. Now, if you want to spend all four of the different resources, you need to look through the stack and take any one you want and place it. So it really adds up to the, the sort of spatial aspect because you need to place them in empty spots. You can't place them where there's resources or flames. They can get you know destroyed by flames, but they're also going to get you things if you cover them around it. That's pretty much the three ways to play. And in addition, you have a notepad to keep score and it has all the different ways to score for all three different modes. And there's also the optional ways to play like in re original King Domino, where if your castle's in the middle, you get 10 points. And if you didn't discard any dominoes, you'll get five points. All right, well, there's King Domino Origin. So let's talk about why I'm never gonna play King Domino again. Okay, first of all, three ways to play. Let's dive into these. Discovery mode. This is the very sort of beginner mode to teach someone how to play King Domino. And it's essentially King Domino, except it has still a more interesting aspect to it, which are those volcanoes. And being able to shoot, if it's a single volcano, it goes uh, up to three away. If it's two volcanoes, it goes two away. And if it's uh, a three volcano, it can only go one away, but it's putting three there. And they can't go on with there's already a fire token or fire. And it gives you just one more thing to think about spatially when you're trying to set up your uh, your, your sort of area there, your, I was going to say your kingdom, but it's a little different here. Also, this, uh, the, the distribution of the tiles, I don't think I quite showed it in the overview, but in the directions and the rules, it shows you the different types of tiles and the different ones. So it's a different distribution than the original King Domino. It's not the same. So it is different in that regard. But the beginning discovery mode is very simple. It's easy to teach to anyone that's never played King Domino or games for that matter. Uh, it's very approachable, but yet there's still enough to think there. So in my opinion, it's better than the original King Domino, but it's still just as easy to teach as the original. Again, maybe teaching the volcanoes is a tiny bit more complex, but uh, even someone who doesn't play a lot of games can, can figure that out really quickly. But in addition to that, now we have the two other modes. The totem mode. Now it adds resources, which could have easily have been cubes, but they're not. They're really nice little wooden bits. I'm glad they went with some cute little bits there. And now you're trying to have another thing to think about when you're drafting dominoes and you're placing those for points at the end of the game, one point per resource, and you're trying to hold and gain majorities like the longest road to Settlers of Catan. And you're fighting over these. So that gives another layer of depth uh, once you've played the discover mode a bunch of time a few times uh, you can jump right into this now gamers can jump right into these last two modes but it's great that you can teach someone in the discovery mode and then move to these ones that have a little bit more going on now so for in this instance when you're looking at the resources you might take a domino that you normally wouldn't do to win the majority because you might be like well there's not a lot of great choices out there for me uh, this one might be a little bit better. I might be able to, you know, I'm kind of working on this one over here, but I don't have any fire symbols yet. This might help me bridge this later. Or you could be like, you know what? If I take this one now, I'm going to get the majority for Flint. And it's not really doing anything for me on like building up my areas, but that could be big getting this thing. So it really makes you think and possibly take different dominoes than you normally would. And I love that because it makes you think and approach the game in a different way without adding a lot of overhead and, you know, making the game more too complicated. It's streamlined, but yet good. And it's better than the, the, than the original mode and it's better than the discover mode. Also, you have the fire, which, you know what? You're putting the volcano on. It's like, oh man, I can't put it on this empty tile because it's not really empty. It has a resource. It will destroy that. And it's like, okay, well, if I destroy this, what's going to happen? You might lose a majority for that. Or you might go, you know what? I'm not even in the running for mammoths. I'm okay to destroy that. And, you know, I'm going to put the fire there because it's going to help me here. Again, more layers of depth without adding a lot of complexity. I love that in this. And, of course, you're getting the points for each of those resources as well. Then you move to the tribe mode, which is also, I wouldn't say any more complicated than, than tribe mode. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated than the, the totem mode, but not a lot. Uh, but this, I love that they figured out, Bruno is just a genius. He just keeps getting better and better and better every time he designs a game, especially when he comes back to something that's a familiar concept like this. Now, in this tribe mode, you're using the resources that are used in the other mode, but they're used in a different way. So instead of just having those resources and trying to get majorities and getting points for those resources at the end, you don't get points for them in this, this, this version, and you don't get them from an art, you're not getting majorities with them in this version. You're spending two different ones or four different ones to get those different cave tiles, caveman tiles, 
and you're putting those on empty spots and you're trying to surround them with certain objectives to get yourself some points. And that one turns almost into like, again, complexity wise, it's still simple from like a mechanic standpoint, or a mechanism standpoint, but wow, it really opens up the spatial aspect of this puzzle because you're trying to add this caveman to empty spots, right? But you're also trying to have certain things surrounded by then. It really ups the spatial puzzle so, so much. And the volcano fire also destroys those cavemen. So another thing to think about, you're trying to set yourself up. And again, think about the game of King Domino in a completely different way. So I love this because you can teach, teach it with discovery mode to someone who has never played King Domino or any games. And I like the other two equally, like they're different. They're both different, but they're both excellent twists on the original. Uh, so I gotta say this, there's no reason for me ever to play King Domino again because this has completely replaced that. Now on the negative side, uh, no, well, before I get there, this also I feel like gives more depth, um, kind of like how Queen Domino did, but this does it uh, in a more streamlined way, I think. Now, Queen Domino does have, I'd still say, more stuff going on with it, uh, but this is just a great streamlined package. Uh, on the negative side of things, this does not mix with King Domino or Queen Domino. Now, I gotta say, I was excited originally that, hey, you can mix Queen Domino and King Domino together. In all reality, I played it like once, and I've never played them mixed again. It's just, I just never got to got around to keep playing it that way. So it's not that big, uh, big of a deal for me. Um, now, I did read a little bit about what Bruno Cathala wrote about this and how it gave him a new design space to think about new distribution of tiles. I told you that there's different tiles now, different distributions of fires and types and numbers and things like that. And it gave him a new space to sort of kind of rethink that and reimagine that. And that's what birthed this. And because of that difference, you just can't mix them. I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm nitpicking here because there's, there's not a lot negative you could say about this. Um, this game is just fantastic. Uh, I will never play the base game of King Domino again now because of this. And it's really, if, if you've never played King Domino, there's no reason to buy the old one. If you have the old one and you don't have Queen Domino, I think this is, you could still get this and either keep King Domino or give it away to a friend or something like that because I think this does everything that does and way more. Uh, now, if you really liked Queen Domino with a little bit more going on, do you need this one? Well, if you often play with people and you want to use this as a way to discover, have new people discover games that haven't played games, then yes, I think this is, this is it. If you have King Domino and Queen Domino and you play with both non-gamers and gamers, do you need this? That one is gonna be a tougher thing for me to say. Uh, it's really gonna be up to you if you think the differences in this are better. For me it is because as much as I liked Queen Domino, I still didn't get it to the table as often as I would have liked because there is just enough mechanisms in there that I've gotta go back and learn the rules and teach the rules and there's a little more moving parts there. Uh, this one I feel like gives me almost as much depth as Queen Domino did in a much more streamlined manner. So this one's gonna get to, get to the table more. But if I've played like original King Domino and or discovery mode of this, then I've played the next two modes with a new gamer and or with gamers. I played the last two modes with gamers. Gamers love it too. Uh, but, and I still wanna get like one more level, then maybe I'll play Queen Domino to get to like the full, full, full experience. But I don't think this is that much far behind. I think it probably gives me 90% of the depth that Queen Domino does, but then 50% of the sort of teaching and figuring out how the different mechanisms work together. So I hope this has helped you figure out is King Domino Origins worth it for you? And for all these reasons mentioned, it's getting a saxophone serenade, which means it is staying in the gaming library, which also means I need to get rid of something. I bet you can guess which one I'm getting rid of. This has been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. <laughs>